Welcome to Quick and Early Miracles. Today, I will be talking about Rapuzzle, Rapuzzle, let down your hair, which is going to be a story instead of, hey David, called From the Top, where you start over again. And components, let's see, let's take a breath, get here, how's everybody doing? So let's talk a little bit about the, the tower that Rapunzel fi finds herself in. Let's say that Rapunzel was on the ground. I'll just call her Rap for short. And she got bit by a dog and she scurried up into her tower so as to avoid dogs. Maybe Rap got her heart broken. Maybe there was a disappointment and an opportunity she didn't get. Maybe she fucked everything all up and it was really sad or sore or made her angry or feel some type of way. And so she thought, I know, I'll get in my tower and I will avoid that risk in the future. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Do you know you've made a choice to go into the tower? Probably not. Probably not. The way to tell is generally that the circles that you're walking in life become smaller and smaller. And that means that the activities that you're involved in, the thoughts that you're thinking, the people you're interacting with, the stuff that's happening or changing is real small and tight because you can only walk small and tight circles in your tower. From the top, is acknowledging that you have removed yourself from life in some way. Maybe it is, um, maybe it's been a few years. Maybe it's been a few minutes. Maybe you got up in the tower during a conversation that you really didn't want to have. The point of being in the tower is to avoid being on the ground and all the risk quote unquote, that's there. And you know I love me some bunny ears. Thanks, thanks Dwayne. You know I love me some bunny ears because what really are you risking there versus here? Well, it seems like in the tower, what you risk is the experience of your aliveness because you have foregone the adventure on the ground. Sometimes the tower perspective is really helpful and a beautiful part of the process. From up there, it's a lot easier to see the shit on the ground. It's also nice to catch your breath. Good morning, good morning, sometimes. And so being in the tower, taking a break from action on the ground, taking a break from love, from work, from pursuit, from anything, in itself is not bad or wrong. Again, that could be a very natural and perfect set for where you are. What I'm what I'm noting is sometimes, thank you, how do you guys know? <laughs> and if you're watching the playback, their birthday wishes. It was yesterday. Um, the, the point that I'm making is <clears throat> sometimes when you're, uh, sometimes you have overstayed your time in the tower and you get bored but you don't necessarily know that you get bored. What you might feel instead is depressed or anxious or confused or, because life's on the ground and that's where you, that's how you interact with desire and impulse and inspiration to go forward. You can't really get much of that stuff in the tower. It's just you, a few mice and like a deck of cards. So let's say that you have, you think perhaps that maybe you're in a tower, maybe something happened and you were like, nah, I'm good on kind of like this noise. I'm going to go away for a while. And again, probably not a conscious choice you made. Maybe it's just in some level opting out of things um, by opting into things that occur to you as lower risk. And again, that could be just small circles same types of drama with your family, same types of problems at work, same types of things that you're wrestling with food or nutrition, like just real small tight circles. Again, not bad or wrong. It's just, let's say that that now has become a little uncomfortable for you as well. 
How do you get out of the tower? How do you let down your hair? How do you start from the top? And I have a video about this a little while ago. Um, I don't think it was the whole thing, but the, your no, this is what you need. You need no. No is a tool that allows for you to navigate the ground with greater confidence. You don't need a tower if you've got a strong no. No is real time. No is saying no. And you don't have to avoid it to have a passive no. You can have an active no. And no doesn't necessarily mean you are saying no. It is more allowing that something isn't for you. And you are allowed to navigate experiences towards what you know instead is preferable to you or inspiring to you or nurturing. Nurturing is a great word. Does it nurture you? Sometimes you may get in a tower around people because you think that they've taken advantage over you or they're boring or you're over their drama. And so rather than interact with them and deal, quote unquote, with that stuff, you just don't. You gave up, you go in your tower. Is that that fun overall? Probably not. But if you want to reemerge, if you want to let down your hair, what you need is no. And no is saying no to maybe some ideas you have that those are the only type of people that you can engage with or those are the only types of conversations that you can have. No is on the other side of possibility. If not this, then what? Sometimes we get stuck in these like false either ors. Do I want to talk to them or not? No, no, no. It's more like this. Do I want to talk to them or not? Next question. Like they're, they are they are yes or no in isolation, not an either or. So allowing yourself to say no to your own ideas, to your own beliefs, makes space to say like, well, what could I imagine? And I put that in this imagination because as far as I can tell the truth, the imagination, to quote John Keats, the truth of the imagination is what I believe in. And that is to say, the possibilities are unlimited. When we're flipping through our Rolodex of what can be, we're flipping through the past, we're flipping through our data, collective data, what we heard, what we saw, but that's not everything. That's not everything. And you can myth bust the idea that there are limits by finding ones that you are totally sold on. Something like, if you need a new job, you need to do this, this, or this. All you need to do is find one example where that wasn't true. <laughs> and then you myth bust that as a limit or a must and you open the door to more things that you might be able to experience, imagine, and know. So coming down from the tower is only attractive if you think or feel that you can be comfortable on the ground. Bernie, what up, girl? And that becomes possible when you learn that you can say no. You can say no to ideas. You can say no to cycles. You can say no to beliefs, people, activities, renditions of life. And the no is important because this makes space for your yes. So why did I lead with no instead of yes? Let's see. It was an intuitive thing, so let me let me let me see what's let me ask why I did that. Why did I do that? Oh, I know. Because your imagination, what you know, what you believe in your heart to be true might be in contrast to the realities that are offered to you externally. So that's like, think of it like marketing. You know, here is, you know, here is the way that, you know, if you want this, you need this. And so you're saying no to the realities and possibilities presented to you to, by other people where they say, for your moment, for your investment, for your this, I will give you this later. This is where you're going. But if it doesn't feel good in the moment and you don't say no to it, it's not going to feel good later. And good in the moment doesn't always mean you know, butterflies. Good in the moment can be that 
sensation of this is right for me. Sometimes like what feels good is the hard thing. What feels good is effort or tension, you know? And, and so the no is saying like no to what is presented, what is vying for your attention, your time, your life on the ground and knowing that instead you can pursue, you are free to pursue or allow, even really just allow what is true in your heart. I am. One of the things that might be important to say no to is like what's your fault and what's not your fault. Sometimes like when you're navigating for yourself, other people might not like it. And that might be a reflection of you not liking when other people are navigating for this self. This conversation has a lot of like other people type stuff. But if you see my other work, it's like, are there, you know, they're only ever just mirroring back to you what you believe to be true, which is another way that this is kind of like a magic word because you're really, when, when you start to exercise what is true for you, it will blow your mind. It will blow your mind because the world adjusts to it. You may have spent years being like, oh, I can't say it like this. I can't do that because, and then you do it out of love or out of, and then it, things move. And sometimes it takes a little bit. Maybe it's not the first time you express it. But from my experience, every time I've stepped into life with love, with the intention to come, you know, start from the top, I have been rewarded or experienced the, the impossible. And that comes back again to what's at risk. So this is a lot of what I talk about in my videos is illusion where we have an illusion that something does something. We think that thinking is how we figure out what to do. We think that this analyzing the past will save the future. We think that we do all of these mental patterns and habits without really knowing or pausing to ask like, what's this doing? It's really not doing what you think it's doing, which is very funny. You know, it's sometimes a little aggravating, but it's pretty funny ultimately. And so when we're looking at the risk of not, of saying no, or the risk of not saying no, or the risk of staying in your tower or going out into the world again, what's really at risk? And I'm not going to do that math for you, but if you just sketch out on paper, okay, well, what am I afraid of? It's a lot easier to look at the fires that are or the noise that is rather than the things that are absent. It's so much harder to capture what isn't happening. And yet somewhere, some way, you know it isn't. It's that feeling like that aching feeling of not really like living the full way, not being the whole way in your potential, not opening your wings the whole way, not living all of your life. So you know, when you're in your tower, what might seem like it's at risk is you could, if you go out of your tower, if you start from the top, you could look stupid. People could judge you. You might not be taken seriously. You might, you might feel sad again. You might not be able to do it. That's what's at risk. That's what you can see from your tower. But what you really can't see is what you lose by not trying. And sometimes just pulling that into your awareness, what's really at risk if I continue to opt out of trying, what's really here if I don't go there, that will be enough to reshape the equation to be like, you know what, I am gonna let down my hair. I'll go out there and try again. And maybe you go out there and it's like a shit show. You can run back up in your tower, it's fine. Sometimes it takes a little time to go back and down. Maybe you take your tower and, and you just kind of like remove one layer of the bricks and it sits a little closer to the ground and then remove another layer. It doesn't have to be all at once. It can be any way you want it. Does anybody have any thoughts, comments, questions, or feelings, concerns, um, personal stories they'd like to apply this to? So just kind of like in recap, what I'm looking at or what I'm laying out here today are ways that we opt out of life or living because it's been painful. Maybe it's been painful because of our own bullshit. 
Maybe it's been painful because of things outside of our control. Maybe we didn't even really know that we opted out, but like I said, things just got kind of small and circular and not really that exciting. That's okay. And yet you're always invited. You can start from the top anytime, however many times you want or need to. And one way to do that or make it more comfortable is to know that you can say no. You can say no to what was, you can say no to the ideas that held you in the tower. You can say, no, maybe I can do this. You can say no to other people. You can say no to dynamics that don't feel good to you. And again, it doesn't have to be like you're actively using your voice. No. It can just be through the allocation of your attention or your energy. I did a session for a client this week and what came to me to teach one of these principles is a tip jar. So, you know, imagine that sometimes at coffee shops, they'll have two tip jars for voting. And the ones I used in the uh, session with him were for Tupac and Biggie. And it's like their preference, you know, it's, you can pick either one. It's not bad or wrong. It's not like, you know, feed the hungry or don't feed the hungry. Like they're, they're sort of, they're more neutral in choice and you tip realities through your intention, your attention, which means you give them life force, you give them energy. If you want to think about what happened the last time you were on the ground, you can, baby. You can think about whatever you want. You can tip any jar you got. So if you're tipping the what was jar, then what you'll feel and experience is that reality, which probably wasn't that great, which is how you ended up in the tower in the first place. But you can also tip what could be. You might tip what's in your heart. What if it's possible? And in that case, then you experience that adventure. And again, it's not bad or wrong. You can analyze the past as much as you want. But what's it really doing? And why would you want to do that? Well, likely you want to do that to mitigate some risk in the future. And again, though, I think I talk about this more in the I Am, Radio, or I Am Radio broadcast series than the Quick and Early Miracles, but when you're analyzing the past, you can't. Oh man, what a, what a trip. What a trip. There is a level of self-reflection that's helpful. You know, you kind of like call things into your awareness and allow them to iterate you forward. Where could you have taken responsibility? Where didn't you like something? Where where could you have done better? You know, like call them into your awareness. And once they're there, that's all that needs to be done. If you're analyzing the past, why your parents did stuff, why, you know, you did stuff, you can only take it so far. You know, you, you kind of call it, you know, you zoom in and you're like, okay, I did that because that happened when I was four. And then you zoom in. Well, it happened in four because my parents, when you zoom in, well, that happened because, you know, you keep zooming and you can't really get to the root cause. It just is. And so the more that you analyze things to try to prevent risk, you know, to, to mitigate risk in the future, the more risk you actually create because you're coming up with all these false ideas about how things are. And then you limit the possibilities that are available to you. And oh yeah, you're not really present to right now to make choices with what is, because you're in the past. Taking a break to reflect and to digest what may have happened, just step back and be still. Yes, absolutely. And so that comes back again to like, it's not bad or wrong if you find yourself in the tower. You can do a lot of great stuff in a tower. It's only saying when you notice that you're sort of over it or done with it, what you can do to go out. And again, with analyzing the past, you know, reviewing things, self-reflect, but you don't need to live there. Saying no is so powerful, definitely underutilized in my life. Thank you for sharing the different ways we can say no. Very helpful. Love you. Subconsciously clever at protecting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Thank you. Yeah, the subconscious is so funny. Like, it is, it is like the king at deception. It will come up with all types of ways that this is the only answer and solution. And that's why the imagination is so important because then you're asking what if you're orienting towards what could be and that almost overrides some of the fear and assumptions that are in the subconscious and that are manifesting as reality the subconscious says this guy's bad and they can't because you won't well you know this is how it is 
But if you're playing in imagination, you're asking what if could be, then you almost like step out of all of that stuff and make space for you know, a new possibility. There will be highs and lows, but the lows often have meaning and ways for you to grow. It may take time to process and see that, however. Yeah, hell yeah. Yes, you know, I think that's so important when we're looking at applying some of the spiritual and new age concepts, because in some ways they create additional stress or strain, because if your life isn't doing this, you must be doing it wrong. If you're not rolling in all the abundance, you must be manifesting wrong. But there is, it seems like there is a natural rhythm, you know, to life and, and there are seasons and changes and everybody's pattern of that looks different. Some have a more extreme arc, some have, you know, smaller and each path is beautiful. And all of the work from my vantage point isn't, it used to be, it used to be, I was like, oh, I can control my roller coaster, but I can't control my roller coaster. Mostly I can only, you know, control how I choose to experience what is, do I say like, great, wow, this is so beautiful to have, feel so much pain to have loved so deeply, you know, like, can you say yes to the discomfort? Can you say yes to the things there that, that don't feel good as if they're correct and say yes to the, to the things that are in front of you right now? Hello, good morning. Um, and I think to me, like when we're looking again at applying the spiritual principles of trying to control things, like for what? Well, you want to feel good. Well, right now, that's right now though. So how do you let right now be okay? And if you can't let it be okay, let it be okay that you can't let it be okay. And that's it. Like to me, that's really, that's where it's at. And then that is what keeps you, you know, at least comfortable on the ground because you're not then taking on like, you, you let yourself take it on as it comes. And maybe, you know, at one point you didn't have a toolkit for that, or maybe it was a lot at once and you, and you couldn't let it all be okay right then. And so you got up in the tower to heal or, or do whatever you need to do. That's okay, that's okay, that's okay. Say it with me, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> do sort of just want to do um, the songs for this stuff. Okay. Sesame, Sesame Street style. That's my vision. All right. Anybody have anything else? Thank you so much for those comments before we close today. The In, in short, I'm saying like, it's okay if sometimes you notice that you've closed yourself off from life and you've gotten up in a tower because of things that maybe didn't go well before. Go well on the inside, go well on the outside, go well because you did it, they did it, life did it, nature did it, whatever. And I'm saying it's okay to start from the top anytime, as many times as you need to. And one way you might want to, you know, consider why you might consider doing that is when you look at the actual risk involved. What's at risk if you stay in a tower? It's easy to see what's at risk if you go out of it because you've been down there. You were, you're avoiding those things. That's why you're in your tower. But what's at risk if you stay removed from life? And I said that it's easier to come down out of the tower when you deploy your no. And deploying your no is the same as allowing yourself to choose from your imagination and your heart, which means you can say no to the things that you don't like, being willing to imagine that there could possibly be more. For example, sometimes if you have difficult family dynamics, it seems like you either accept that they're that, they're that way or you don't. That's it. But the choice is a little bit more, is a little different than that, and that you can accept as they are and allow for them to change and spend time imagining what it might be like if they could hear you or was more comfortable or there was more love. Like, these are miracles I've witnessed. It's incredible. It's fucking incredible. My relationship with, like, my parents, my family, it's all, it's all different than it was for years and it happened when I let it sometimes when we're stuck in you know why we don't go into the ground is because things never moved 
Well, sometimes they don't move because you're thinking about them the way that they are all the time. Sometimes they don't move because you don't move. So when you start to say no to the things that you don't like, no, I won't be treated like that. No, I won't be doing that to myself anymore. Then you can say like, well, what would I, what would be nice instead? Well, it'd be nice if when I called, she listened. It'd be nice if when I needed something I said, it'd be nice if, you know, start to allow yourself to look into this place. And I use the example of a tip jar. You tip that future. You know, it might take some time for there to add up, you know, for enough money to add up in that tip jar to buy the new reality. But the tipping of the one you want feels better than focusing on the one you don't. And so whether or not the tip jar ever transforms into something doesn't really matter because in the actual act, in the moment, by choosing the vision instead of circling on what was, you feel better. You win. You win right then. And sometimes that does include, however, saying no to being a, a part of things. Sometimes that means, no, I'm not going to talk right now, even if you want to talk. And that's okay. That's all okay. You can say no. The better you take care of yourself, the easier it is for you to be a participant in, in relationships, to be a participant in organizations. If you're not taking care of yourself and you're the only one that knows what you need to do that, that you're showing up to those things with less than you can, less than, less than you are. And in that case, you're not really, you're really not helping them. You're not really helping you. It, it, it creates strain over time. And yet, <clears throat> if that's the place that you're in right now, that's the pattern that you're noticing, you fix it, fix it by letting it be okay. Sing the okay song. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay if that's where you are to start. Accept it, accept it, accept it, accept and love where you are. And that's what lets it move. It is the same as saying, I am. This is the God consciousness state. This is aligning with the truth of who you are. You're not afraid. <laughs> you know, in Home Alone, one. And he's like, I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid. That's, that's really what, like, it's calling on that. That's freedom when you're calling on that. And you can call on that by recognizing, like, the sameness of things you know this is something i've created this is an opportunity for me i can grow through this when you start to say yes to life and you're dancing with things rather than fighting them then they move and again part of that is still like part of that dance is sometimes saying no no i'm not going to take that step no and you can say no by saying yes you don't have to you know it's just allowing you to to pick through alternatives based on your own preference all right, that's it for today. Um, anything else for me? Um, let's see. I have, I reported a new episode with Dr. Dwayne Hartman yesterday. He's a clinical hypnotherapist called, um, called, he calls himself, he was called the trans alchemist. And we're talking about applications of God consciousness and what that looks like. It was a really um, fun conversation I think closer to two hours so that will be available in podcast shortly and I have the prior episode is available on my website and on my link tree and I have the divination card good morning good morning the divination deck they're over there on the counter right now so I can't pull it but they're on these oracle cards that I designed and wrote that they're really fun and oracle cards are a way to have a conversation with what's present that you might not see. So, you know, when I'm talking about being a metaphysician, when I'm talking about like the non-physical, what we're looking at is like, here's what is, and then underneath what is creates what is, and also how you interact with what is creates what is. So it's like this, if you can't move the pieces on the ground, if things up here aren't changing, then you can look at those other places. How am I looking at it? What's actually underneath here? Symbolically, what does that mean? And oracle cards are one way to tap into the awareness of like what's actually there versus what you can see. And when you're working with it at that level, again, it moves. Which seems to be today's theme. Let it move. 
Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair.